Joining us now is Mark Short, Chief of Staff for Vice President Mike Pence. Mark, thank you for being with us. We know your schedule is really busy. John, thanks for having me today. Well, let's start off with the economy in election 2020. Some analysts are predicting a recession next year. I know it seems to be even a concern for the White House announcing today that it's holding off on more Chinese tariffs, at least through December. Well, I think that if you look at the economy, what I see is the reality that we have record low unemployment for African Americans, record low unemployment for Hispanic Americans, 3.7 percent. It's been below 4 percent for over a year now. Uh, over 600,000 uh, new jobs created in manufacturing alone. It's been a pretty dynamic uh, economy under Donald Trump from both the regulatory impact as well as tax relief that we provided. On the trade front, the reality is that, is that we don't see a recession. We do think that for for decades, uh, presidents and Republicans and Democrats alike have assumed if we trade with China, then you'll see other freedom reforms that happen. The reality is that it remains a communist regime that continues to persecute Christians. It's a communist regime that continues to steal um, intellectual property that doesn't honor its trade deals. And this administration has decided it's about time that, that somebody stood up and began to change the dynamic. Uh, we believe that there's a that the economy is strong. We believe it's going to remain strong. So we're not anticipating a recession. Mark, on the campaign trail, Democrats, they're focusing a lot of their attention on President Trump. Julian Castro, he is out with this new ad. It's pretty scathing. Uh, we want to play that for you, and then we'll get your reaction. Let's go ahead and roll that. President Trump, you referred to countries as holes. You urged American congresswomen to go back to where they came from. You called immigrants rapists. As we saw in El Paso, Americans were killed because you stoked the fire of racists. Innocent people were shot down because they looked different from you. Because they looked like me. They looked like my family. Words have consequences. Ya basta. I'm Julian Castro, and I approve this message. It, the president, he did say these things, so does Castro have a point here? Jen, I'm not quite sure that Castro is even going to make the stage in the future debates, but I think the reality is that uh, Donald Trump has uh, embraced uh, Americans of, of all races, of all colors. They're, they serve throughout our administration. I think, as we've just discussed economically, his policies have benefited all Americans. And so we understand that there's going to be a lot of heated rhetoric in this campaign season, but uh, we're not paying too much attention to Julian Castro. Uh, you know, this week, a West Virginia senator sent the president a letter asking, uh, asking the president to clean up his language. The president had used uh, the Lord's name in vain at one of his campaign rallies. Mark, you're obviously very close to the, the vice president. What does he think when he hears the president talking like this? Well, I think it's, uh, it's certainly unfortunate any time uh, the Lord's name is used in vain. And I, and I don't think you'll be hearing that again in future rallies, but you know I'm also going to be respectful of the vice president's private conversations with the president and what he encourages, said or not said at, at rallies. I do think that uh, you know this president has energized uh, a large number of Americans, and I think the reality is that there's so many Christians support the administration because of decisions that this administration has taken to defend life, uh, for decisions this administration has taken to honor religious freedom. And I think that his support among the evangelical community is strong. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, excuse uh, taking the Lord's name in vain. We take that seriously, and hopefully, it doesn't happen again. Mark, speaking of evangelicals, they put a huge spotlight on persecuted Christians, and I know it's a big concern for Vice President Mike Pence. President Trump, shortly after his inauguration, pledged to give persecuted Christians top priority. Yet we're admitting fewer refugees than before, and some critics say that the so-called third country rule could leave persecuted minorities in danger. What's changed? Oh, I don't know anything has changed, John. I think, in fact, uh, this administration has continued to stand up. And, and uh, in particular, we talk about uh, the Uyghurs in China, and the vice president has continued to make that a priority. Uh, there's been uh, the president, the vice president as well, has, uh, has uh, made this a priority in the conversations with Burma. And uh, I think that uh, even as well across the continent of Africa, the vice president has engaged world leaders to make sure that uh, their religious freedom is honored and that, uh, that particularly those of Christian faith are not persecuted. I don't think there's been any lapse in the administration's focus on that agenda, and I think uh, the vice president continues to carry that on uh, with, great, uh, with great courage. All right, Mark, stick around. We have much more to talk about.